Hey guys, it's Alexander Williamson here with the Secret History Living Inside Your Aquarium. Today we are going to be going over myths, yes, myths, lies, and half-truths that you've been told about your shrimp. So out here we have my uh, green water bin and also some experiments I've been running for months. So if we take a look at the temperature, we got 60 degrees. Now this has been our warm spell, but these bins have been out here for uh, two months now. The lowest reading they've had is 46. And I did put them in during a warm spell, but what I want you to see is that I have Neocaridina shrimp happily living in these ranges of temperatures. It's not unusual to be loved by anyone. No, it's not unusual for this to happen. So here we have a Neocaridina palmata shrimp. It's in its kind of wild form. You can see it kind of jumping around there. But we also have cherry shrimp in here. And uh, it'll just take me one sec to probably find one. They're very hard to spot on these rocks. There we go. Here's one. There's probably about 30 in here. They are doing just fine, just peachy. The key with shrimp is to uh, whatever changes you're doing, you want to try to keep the pH and the TDS the same. But as far as temperature goes, people are paranoid about temperature. And in the words of one of my uh, favorite shrimp breeders and the man who has given me or sold to me the best shrimp strains I have, uh, temperature don't matter. And that is uh, Lucas Brett's uh, It Ain't Gonna Matter. Uh, as long as they don't get too hot. That was uh, in the immortal words of Shrimp Jesus. So, I mean, out here, we got 60 reading. Uh, even when they're in the sun, they get up to about 70 in the day. Inside, I keep my shrimp around 80 degrees or 75 degrees, depending on the setup. So, let's go back inside. We'll get to the next myth, which uh, I kind of just dispelled there in that I showed you a... A Neocaridina Davidi and a Neocaridina Palmata uh, living hand in hand happily together ever after. So let's go inside to the fish room here and we're going to get into myth number two, which is that you can't have various shrimp species living together. Well, here I've got a Babalti shrimp and a Neocaridina shrimp. Those aren't even the same family of shrimp. And they are living together in perfect harmony, having babies, doing just fine. So, you know, you don't need to take it just from my word, but let's go down to another shrimp. So down here we have Malawa shrimp. Ooh, look at that nice pregnant buried female. These are a clear shrimp. Uh, they turn various colors in the daylight. I have other videos on them, and they're just, uh, they'll adapt to whatever their settings are. But in here, we have three pregnant shrimp hanging out. And uh, what do we happen to have in the tank alongside of them? Uh, let's look for the red Neocaridina shrimp that also live in here with them. Uh, where are they right now? A minute ago, they were seriously out. They're just giving me all sorts of trouble. The other thing I wanted to dispel while we're here is that you can't have fish with your shrimp. And that's just not true. Okay, so here's the Neocaridina corner. They do sometimes separate themselves, but look at this big mama. She's carrying eggs. She's so, she's so high quality that you can't see the eggs she's carrying through her shell. It's that opaque. Uh, also, we've got some younger ones down below in here, and uh, the other thing I want to show you about these guys is that they are living with tetras, they're living with rasboras, and they are living with big danios, who happen to be a nippy species, and they're living with convict cichlids. So, no, that's not the best way to raise a colony when you're trying to get the numbers to explode, if you're trying to do shrimp for profit. But adult shrimp oftentimes can live and do just fine and learn what they need to learn about when to hide. Look, here's one right out in the open. Uh, they learn, and I've built them the proper rockery. So there's cracks all in this that they can hide in, as well as tangles of plants and things where the shrimp can hide. 
and then obviously a sponge filter, which is where they like to graze and feed. And speaking of, here's another Malawa shrimp or Malawa shrimp. These guys can turn all different colors. Uh, they usually have a clear tinge to them, but they're a really fun shrimp to have. Then down below in the bottom tank, this is my favorite shrimp tank. Let's take a look at this one. In here, we have panda loaches, which uh, are another favorite fish of mine. But we also have, these are from Lucas Brett's. These are Neocaridina Blue Dreams. And in here, we have a very pregnant female yet again. She's literally giving birth today. You can see the shape of the eggs. And there's actually a baby shrimp right now trying to get out of an egg. So you guys are getting treated to that. Uh, but they're living with these ginormous, they're not as big as bamboo shrimp and things, but feel free to put bamboo shrimp with your other shrimp. Uh, they're living with these short nose Japanese algae eating shrimp. Now they're called short nose, but they actually have a longer nose. I think they should be called gonzo shrimp because they have uh, googly eyes like a Muppet or something. Uh, but you can see side to side, there's a large female next to him of high Cal uh, caliber. So the kinds of shrimp, there is a caveat to this. The kinds of shrimp you may not want to mix, or maybe you do, it depends on what your desire is, is if you have two Caradina Davidi. So if you put a red and a blue next to each other, what will happen is they can default back to their closest common ancestor. And with these guys, since they're just being bred for color and outside traits, their, their internal genetics are very, very, very similar, if not identical, and it's really just genes that express color that have changed much. So with these guys, you'll often see them revert to a lighter tone of blue or patchy blue and red, which can be really fun as a hobbyist. But if you're trying to breed a perfect strain that has very dark blue consistency on all your shrimp, which is the goal in this tank, you don't want to do that. And see, sometimes you get lighter shrimp, like this one, who I'm going to pull out soon, uh, just because, just that's nature. But other shrimp, like yellow shrimp a lot of times, uh, not all of them, but some of them, and a lot of pearl shrimp, all pearl and jelly shrimp, are actually Neocaridina palmata or Zangagensis, uh, which are different than the Davidi. So in here, you can see in this tank, we've got some gold line shrimp, and we've also got some uh, just yellow jelly or whatever you want to call them, Sakura. They, the point being is that another myth is that they're all Neocaridina Davidi, and they're just not. Uh, in the mid-90s and early 2000s, many, many companies sprang up, as well as hobbyists, uh, when cherry shrimp first hit the market in 2001 in America. Uh, 2003 was when they had the first good opaque ones, and they landed in November in L.A., and they were distributed through Petco and local uh, fish stores around the country. Now, since then... It's been a different world. Asia has incredible types of shrimp that we've never seen, colors and combinations. But what I want to say is that these shrimp, sometimes you're mixing wild palmatas, which may be from, say, Thailand instead of Taiwan, and they could be 2,000 miles apart or 1,000 miles apart, and you mix them for certain traits. So that's how we get new shrimp, is either line breeding, where you breed the same species over and over and over, and in sheer number you get mutations, and you work towards the mutations you like, you keep uh, encouraging those to happen and mixing babies that have the same mutation, or you work with different lines and you'll get different shrimp. So if you wanted a blue jelly shrimp, you might breed this shrimp with a uh, palmata instead of a neo uh, caradina davidi. So even though they're all neo caradina shrimp, uh, the colorful ones in these tanks, it doesn't mean that uh, they need to be separated. It just depends what you want to do. And if you want a bunch of colors of shrimp in your tank, what everyone will tell you is you can't do that. That's not true, guys. They're going to be fine. That's another myth to dispel. I think that's number six on our list right now. And the myth is basically just 
you can't do it. Yeah, you can. And for two or three generations, they may actually look like really cool mixes of the shrimp. And some percentage will revert to a clear shrimp, to a wild, you know, kind of like this looking shrimp. Um, but that's the worst that'll happen. And yes, that undoes a lot of years of line breeding and a lot of generations, but it's, it, you know, that's your prerogative. If you want to mix shrimp, mix shrimp. Just know that you may lose the, the dominant colors and things uh, that you're looking for, like a brilliant blue or whatever you may uh, be seeking. And also, when you're keeping your shrimp with fish, be smart. Don't put an Oscar in the tank. Uh, and know that if as long as the adults aren't getting eaten by what the fish that they live with, then the babies are what you need to worry about. And as long as you provide tons of thick vegetation and rocks for them to hide under, I almost guarantee you that some number of babies will survive and the colony will at least subsist, even in tanks where you have all these guppies that are happy to eat baby shrimp. The numbers are growing, and with plecos, and with tetras, and pseudomagills, uh, and even crayfish. So, you uh, you don't really need to worry a ton about that if it's just for a hobby. Now, if it's for a profit tank, yes, just put shrimp in the tank, and, uh, and maybe snails, and you'll be good to go. Now, the next big uh, myth that I want to dispel is something that works against what I do, which is working so hard to get a good grade of shrimp. So this female is about as high of a blue shrimp grade as you can get. She's got solid blue on her tail. All her antennas and legs are solid blue. There's no variation in color, and you can't see through her sides. She is brilliantly beautiful. And so is this guy here. He's got a little bit of clear clearing on his tail but he probably is just about to molt is what that's about but look at this guy he is what we'd call a lower grade and in cherry shrimp there used to be grades which was uh you had either a cherry shrimp a sakura shrimp above that which was a spotted cherry shrimp with stripes you still some clear then you had a fire shrimp which was a solidly clear red shrimp and then you had a painted fire shrimp, or Sakura fire, it depends on what you want, which scale you went by, but painted fire or Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary's a different line, but uh, painted fire meant essentially what this does, which is what a blue dream is. Now, not every color, though, has such specific gradings, and the grading scale is actually going away as we speak. So when you buy shrimp, the level and quality of these shrimp has gotten so high that in the hobby uh, they're charging a flat rate whether it is a good shrimp or a bad shrimp when they're mixed. Now if you buy from someone like me who is carefully curating the tanks and is going to get rid of things like this and try to breed like only the best for generation for years and years, that's where you may pay a premium of, you know, ten dollars a shrimp fifteen dollars a shrimp it's up to you what you're willing to pay really and the norm is probably somewhere between six and nine dollars for a quality uh neo caradina shrimp so i just wanted to dispel that that grades are not what they used to be they used to be kind of the holy grail people used to pay up to 20 or 30 dollars for a perfectly painted fire red cherry shrimp or a, uh, a Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary means that it has the, the flesh on the inside of the, the cherry shrimp itself is actually red. But interesting fact is that different shrimp, uh, all the different colors, their flesh is a off pink to salmon color when they die within a matter of hours. Doesn't matter if they're blue or yellow or what, they end up that color, and I believe it has something to do with the organic iodine that is inherently in their system, uh, reacting with oxidation and breaking down of the molecules. All right, guys, so another one that I think everyone worries far too much about is are you feeding your shrimp too much? The answer to that is you don't need to feed your shrimp at all in many cases. If you have an ecosystem with some fish, and uh, you've got some mulm and algae and stuff. If you've got a healthy fish tank, you don't want it perfectly clear. You don't want it spotless. You want 
stuff in it. You want a little bit of algae. You want a little bit of this, a little bit of that. It's a spice of life. And these shrimp, I never feed them anything specifically for shrimp. And they're multiplying just fine because I feed plecos and I feed uh, these endlers. And because of that, they're doing absolutely great. I don't need to feed them. Now, if you have a shrimp-only tank or maybe a two-gallon nano tank and it's new, it's not cycled, it doesn't have all this biofilm that they love to eat on it. See how they're just eating things off the leaves and crawling around the ground and they're just doing their thing. Uh, if that's not occurring for you, then yes, you may want to give them some sort of food. And in that case, I recommend, I really like uh, Hikari crab cuisine uh, and shrimp. So it's for like, you know, it's a sinking pellet. But I like this one. There are so many foods out there. Uh, you can decide whatever you like. I happen to like that one. Not that they pay me or anything like that. But I like that one. Uh, Bacter AE, that's another uh, conversation, is do shrimps need their environment primed with bacteria? And my answer to that is the babies, yes, but is Bacter AE better than just time, letting your tank season for a year or two? No, I think that it, you can't beat time. It's just, it's something that takes time, it takes patience, and you'll get there but nothing substitutes for it. And the, the myth, just like you can cycle a tank in a night, you can make a tank safe for fish to live in, but that doesn't mean that all the proper bacteria have taken a hold on all the surface area. So just be aware of that. You can cut corners in the hobby, and there's a lot of uh, strides that have been made in this hobby, but that doesn't mean that you can get away with uh, neglecting things forever, usually. Now, shrimp are, as I've said, you've seen that they can live at high temp or at low temperatures, and they can live probably up to 90 degrees, with the caveat that also sudden change equals death for shrimp. So more so than temperature or uh, even, you know, any change to a tank, I like to just top off my tanks with the amount of evaporation. I don't do big water changes, and my shrimp seem to do just great, including, you know, crystal shrimp and other shrimp uh, around the house. So, right there, now we're up to eight, and uh, I think that if, if you wanted to uh, include another one, it's that you shouldn't sell, colony collapse is the issue. You shouldn't sell half your shrimp ever. You know, if you've got 50 shrimp, well, okay, let me change that. If you have 200 shrimp, you can sell half. But if you have 50 shrimp, shrimp and you sell 25 of the babies, next month, you're only going to have 12, maybe 20 to sell if they have babies. And they take a few months to mature. So what you want to do is you want to find a pace of like 20% or 10% of your colony that you're selling off monthly, but you're really holding back like 100 or 70 shrimp in a tank. In this tank, I hold at least 60 or 70 blue shrimp in a 10 gallon, and anything above that, I take out. Uh, when I see that it's a lower grade, I take it out, and maybe I sell those for a dollar or two to a pet store. So that's another myth is that, you know, you can just sell off big chunks of your colony. Colonies are like a giant organism together, and you want to treat them as such because you can shock them by doing that. Um, you can put all sorts of changes in the water over time, but it's slow and steady with shrimp. That's more important than anything. I've had shrimp in the mail arrive clear because they're so stressed and cold, and what happens is they live slower. So you may have a shrimp that could live five years, but it barely moves and doesn't do anything. It's in what we call stasis. And if it was living at 50 or 60 degrees, that may be all it does. Uh, but if you threw that into an 80 degree tank, it would die instantly. So you need to think like nature thinks and just don't act suddenly. All right, guys? So... I think we've dispel, dispelled quite a bit of the, the main myth with these shrimp. Also, catapa leaves. They are great. They are anti, uh, antibacterial, antifungal, and they are great for shrimp. But you definitely uh, don't need them. 
you need surface area. So you need surface area and places to hide for your shrimp to feel comfortable. And basically, if your shrimp are reproducing, you're doing something very, very right. And uh, as long as they reproduce and they're not dying at a faster rate, I think you're doing a great job. I have a ton of other videos on shrimp, but I just kind of wanted to get away from some of the some of the things that I hear all the time in the hobby that just aren't true. I mean, you can really have a lot of fun with a tank like this. You can put different species, different colors. You want to check parameters. You wouldn't want to put a Taiwan B with a Neo Caridina just due to the TDS and the pH requirements. But you could put a Taiwan B with a blue bolt or a jade shrimp or something like that. Uh, not a Neo Caridina jade shrimp, but with, uh, you know, a green hulk or something like that. That's fine. Um, so that's basically what I wanted to cover. Uh, the easiest way to hurt a shrimp feeding wise, this will be the last one, is overfeeding. What happens, and I actually overfed this morning on purpose because every snail in the tank is right here eating with them. And what you'll get is planaria, snails, and hydra. And you don't necessarily want those. They're not going to kill all your shrimp, but they do stress out your shrimp. And so you just want to make sure that uh, you don't overfeed often. And it can happen once in a while. But you also, uh, if you see too many, sh uh, if you see too many of these shelled creatures, that means you're overfeeding. It means that there there's extra food than the shrimp need. And you see these shrimp are not eating the food. They're just grazing on leaves, doing their thing. So be careful because if you put too much food in, you can actually risk raising the ammonia. And with shrimp, it's the heavy metals or any metals, copper, uh, even too much iron. But copper, tin, aluminum, those things are just killer for, for shrimp. And uh, chlorine and ammonia, those are also killer in even small amounts for shrimp. So be careful with what you're putting in, but don't be insane about it. These guys are pretty hardy, and, I mean, they're found in ecosystems all across the world. Thanks for joining me. I hope I dispelled some of the stuff that you've been told. And don't listen to me. L listen to whatever source you want. I mean, you can listen to me if you want to. But do your research and think about it. Sometimes a shrimp swims 10 feet down in a, in a stream and that water's cold and the shrimp comes back up and it's fine. You know, sometimes it's in the warm shallows on a sunny day. So do your research on where these things come from and what they eat on, on things like that. And, and you're going to do fine. You're going to do just fine. Usually it's when people start adding chemicals and medicines to their tank that I start to see over and over, collapse after collapse, and the shrimp dying. So just be laid back with it. If you like this, please give it a thumbs up. Think about subscribing, and I will talk to you guys later. You can help out the channel on Patreon or during live chats by doing uh, uh, super chats. All right, guys, I hope you learned something. Take care of yourselves, your tanks, and swim on. I'll have uh, something new for you guys coming up shortly. Take care.